ਉਨਟੈਰੀਓ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਵੱਡਾ ਫੈਸਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਕਿ ਉਨਟੈਰੀਓ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਸਕੂਲਸ ਔਰ ਡੇ ਕੇਅਰਸ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ 200 ਮੀਟਰ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਡਰਗ ਕੰਜ਼ਮਪਸ਼ਨ ਸਾਈਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਪਰੇਟ ਕਰ ਸਕੂਗੀਆਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬੈਨ ਕਰਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਸੋ ਉਨਟੈਰੀਓ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦਾ ਆ ਫੈਸਲਾ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਕਿ ਡਰਗ ਕੰਜ਼ਮਪਸ਼ਨ ਸਾਈਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਡਰਗ ਡੈਂਸ ਵੀ ਕਿਹਾ ਗਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਸਿਕਿਉਰਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਵੀ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਹੈ ਉੱਥੇ ਨੀਡਲਸ ਦੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਸੀਗੇ ਸੋ ਸਕੂਲਸ ਔਰ ਡੇ ਕੇਅਰਸ ਦੇ 200 ਮੀਟਰ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਡਰਗ ਕੰਜ਼ਮਪਸ਼ਨ ਸਾਈਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਪਰੇਟ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾ ਸਕੂਗੀਆਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬੈਨ ਕਰਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਉਨਟੈਰੀਓ ਦੇ ਡਿਪਟੀ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਔਰ ਹੈਲਥ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਸਿਲਵੀਆ ਜੋਨਸ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਔਰ ਜੋ ਨਵਾਂ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਚੱਲਿਆ ਹੈ ਐਮਪੌਕਸ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਕੀ ਉਹ ਐਮਰਜੈਂਸੀ ਹੈ ਐਜ਼ ਡਿਕਲੇਅਰਡ ਬਾਈ ਦ WHO ਔਰ ਉਨਟੈਰੀਓ ਐਮਪੌਕਸ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਲੜਨ ਲਈ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਤਿਆਰ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਕੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਊਗਾ ਇਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਇਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ Well you know something I I just don't believe these safe consumption sites I've listened to the people in the neighborhoods I've consulted with them I've been getting endless phone calls uh about needles being in the parks uh needles being by the schools and by the daycare uh, that's unacceptable what we believe in these heart hubs is we're putting 378 million dollars into supporting people with primary care, mental health services, addiction care and support, social services, employment support, shelter and transition beds, supportive housing and other supplies and services including uh naloxone and uh on-site showers. So, you know, giving a someone a, an addict a place to uh do their their injections, we haven't seen it get better. This was supposed to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. it's the worst thing that could ever happen to a community to have one of these safe injection sites uh in their neighborhood the other problem i have was with the federal government you know safe supply they get to go up there and get endless endless amounts of drugs and guess what they do they go out and they sell it and and uh get other people addicted and then they go and get even stronger drugs But as far as I'm concerned the federal government's the biggest drug dealer in the entire country it's unacceptable it needs to stop we need to get rid of safe supply we need to put money into treatment detox beds that's what we need to do not continue to giving people free drugs um we were able to announce a very exciting transition and um a pathway for out of addictions um we're calling them homelessness and addiction recovery treatment hubs or heart hubs and basically it will allow up to 19 new heart hubs to be placed in communities uh, across ontario application based and the concept behind them is to bring all of the organizations together that do really important work in the mental health and addiction space and that can be uh services like pro- providing primary care providing supports on social services um pathways into employment or training uh supportive housing is a really important piece of this announcement because we know that people who are in treatment either for their mental health or for addictions really need that stability of a um a home and housing and so 378 million dollars over 3 years will be invested in 19 heart hubs across ontario the other really important piece is we are uh, redesigning and strengthening the current uh, consumption and treatment sites to ensure that sites that are located within 200 meters of a school or a daycare uh, must either transition into a heart hub which is of course our desire um or they will have to shut their doors uh we cannot have um clean healthy strong neighborhoods uh when we have um organizations and facilities that are allowing uh illicit drug use uh in the same neighborhood as our children go to school 378 million investment over 3 years will be very specifically uh targeted and used for the 19 heart hubs and that is new dollars frankly a lot of data that was coming in from local police services saying that there was an increase in uh crime around these consumption and treatment sites it was conversations that premier ford and myself have had with parents in those neighborhoods saying this can't go on 
Um, I should not be held hostage in my home because I'm afraid to walk down the street. Um, business people that were expected to be social workers, this can't continue. Um, you know, there is no world where consumption sites are good neighbors to schools and to daycares. And that is why we have uh, not only strengthened um, the, uh, the piece around the existing and ongoing CTS sites. Look, in an ideal world, I would love for CTS sites to have much more um, success on getting people into treatment. That unfortunately has not been the, the case, which is why we're moving to this new model of homelessness and addiction recovery treatment hubs. Minister, uh, uh, these sites, which are called the safe uh, drug consumption sites, and a federal opposition leader mentioned these as the drug dens. There were security concerns. There were many other concerns. The same question, why these sites were allowed to open at the first instance. And also, uh, you have not mentioned about the parks, whether these will be closed 200 meters from the parks also, or is only the daycares and the schools? Thank you. Yeah, so the 200 meter uh, restriction is very specifically to schools and to licensed daycares. Um, and in terms of why were they opened in the first place? As I said previously, you know, a consumption and treatment site, our hope was that a, a higher percentage of people who access these sites would have sought treatment or would have been encouraged to seek treatment. What we have seen, unfortunately, is not enough people are are choosing treatment as a pathway out of addictions. And I believe strongly and our government believes strongly that compassionate care has to go beyond just enabling drug use, normalizing drug use. So that's why there's been a very um, dramatic shift to ensure that these heart hubs offer a, a suite of services and do not offer continuing access to illicit drugs. Uh, Minister, um, the WHO uh, declared the MPOX uh, as an emergency. Uh, can you elaborate, uh, is that an emergency here in Ontario and is Ontario prepared uh, for this uh, monkeypox because cases are rising and what our, about our borders, our airports, uh, how prepared Ontario is on MPOX? Thank you. So I've worked very closely with the Chief Medical Officer of Health to A, ensure that we have sufficient vaccines to protect um, our most vulnerable and at-risk citizens from MPOX. And I have been assured that we have sufficient supplies of vaccines. I would encourage people, if they are in one of the at-risk categories, to have those conversations with their primary care practitioners, their local public health um, offices, and take advantage of the vaccines that we have to protect our citizens. So the federal government would have to step in if there was any screening from out of country, but I just wanna reassure you and everyone in Ontario that we have um, sufficient supply of MPOX vaccines. So I would encourage people who are traveling or at risk uh, because they are in an at-risk category to have those conversations with their primary care practitioners, their local public health units, and take advantage of the fact that we have a vaccine for MPOX that will protect you. So again, any uh, screening that would have to take place um, from out of country would be the responsibility of our federal government. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they have made no uh, action movement forward to screen from uh, countries where MPOX has been uh, on the rise. Well, we're doing everything we can in Ontario. As I said, we have secured sufficient MPOX vaccines, and we will continue to encourage our um, uh, Ontario and Canadian citizens to take advantage of that um, very important vaccine that protects.